California is brought to you by Jack in the Box. Try the new Bacon Insider at Jack in the Box. It's got bacon mixed right into the patty at participating restaurants. By Toyota, number one in MPG, durability, and resale value. Toyota, let's go places. And by Xfinity, home of the most live sports. And let us now check our bail arm starting goalies here in Glendale. Antti Niemi trying to bounce back off a game on Wednesday in Anaheim when he was pulled in favor of Alex Stalock. And 21-year-old Mark Byzantine makes his NHL debut up from the American Hockey League. And he'll get his first taste of the National Hockey League against the playoff-bound San Jose Sharks. Todd McClellan and company reaching the 50-win plateau for the fourth time. And the first time since the 09-10 season with that 5-1 victory over the Colorado Avalanche last night. And we're underway as Joe Thornton's line starts the game for the San Jose Sharks. We saw Todd McClellan and of course on the other bench, Dave Tippett, the disappointing end to a long season for he and the Coyotes last night as a result of Dallas's 3-0 shutout win over St. Louis, Coyotes eliminated. Truthfully, Mike Smith doesn't get hurt and they don't have to use, no offense to Tomas Grice, Thomas Grice, they don't have to use Grice and Byzantine, then you've probably got a different story for the Phoenix Coyotes. Their goaltending, frankly, let them down late in the season. There's Thomas. You, know, you hate to say it because he's such a great guy, but he just didn't play well enough for the Coyotes to push them into a playoff spot. Well, that's one way of looking at it, but they didn't score no. in Nashville. They didn't score in L.A. in a game we did a couple of nights ago on NBCSN, and you got to score to win games, and I'll give it to you that Mike Smith's an elite goaltender, no question about it, but the offense, even in front of Grice, just wasn't there down the stretch for Phoenix. Wow, you really are a goalies guy. You know as well as I do that it comes down to goaltending. That's what's going to get you where you need to go. You can't have those goals go in. It's just, it's just too disheartening. Brad Stewart. Waiting for the line change ahead of him as we're just underway here in the first period. And Stewart really taking his time up for Justin Braun. Now at center, Joe Pavelski. And the Coyotes work it back now, turned over to Burns. And he rifles a shot high over the glove of Byzantine. Back comes Phoenix as Lori Korpakoski catches it. We get an offside whistle. Let's look at our Lexus keys to the game. Just one key. That's all you need to start your beautiful Lexus automobile. So the one key for the San Jose Sharks, Todd McClellan, good habits. They are easier to have your game and be confident in your game going into the playoffs if you have those good habits and you're able to continue to build momentum from them. So all those things that Patrick Marlowe talked about, the details of the game have to be in place. Down the stretch here, the Coyotes have lost six in a row heading toward their eventual elimination last night. And really, I think throughout the organization, when they lost in Nashville on Thursday night, 2-0, to a Predators team that wasn't going to the playoffs, I think the feeling there was that might have been their last opportunity. It certainly was to control their own destiny. James Shepard lines up at center on this ship with Tomas Hurdle on his left. Tomas returning to the Sharks lineup after his long injury layoff last night. Played 15 minutes, a couple of hits, a shot that was recorded, another one that went off the crossbar. And Todd McClellan said before last night's game, he was going to monitor Hurdle closely throughout that game. And then again this morning to see if the young man was ready to go. And obviously, no worse for the wear as Hurdle's back in the lineup here tonight again for the San Jose Sharks. Not in the lineup for the Sharks tonight, Mike Brown, Scott Hannon, and, of course, the injured players as well, Adam Burrish and Rafi Torres. A shot there by Tomas Hurdle on net. Good forecheck by Tommy Wingles. Again, when you have a guy like Hurdle come back, and if you get Rafi Torres back and Mike Brown, you've got that depth that you so desperately need going into playoffs if you want to have a long run. I should mention as well, Matt Nieto not in the lineup tonight. The Sharks have temporarily assigned Matt to the ECHL Ontario Reign in Southern California. That's not for 
his play. It's so that he can be near his family between now and the start of the Stanley Cup playoffs as his mother underwent surgery recently and the Sharks were able to accommodate his request to be in the area with his family. So Nieto will get ice time there. He'll get a chance to practice, but also spend some important time with his family. And the Sharks expect him back for game one. Off the face off, a shot saved by Niemi. As the first scoring attempt for Phoenix will go to Jeff Halpern. And now Bracken Kearns on the near boards for Andrew Desjardins, trying to get it up ice for Tyler Kennedy. Desjardins back on it again, and trying to take it to the net, then he lost it. And it comes back to the line, held in the zone though by Dan Boyle. Who I thought, Drew, had one of his better games of late last night against Colorado, Dan Boyle. Scored his 12th goal. Here's a chance in front. And a penalty coming up in front of the net to Phoenix. Boyle with a shot. That's blocked. And now as it's controlled by the Coyotes, we'll get the whistle. And a Sharks power play. And there's a shaken up player as well down on the ice. Michael Stone for Phoenix as he struggles to get back to their bench. I think he blocked the shot. He did. Dan Boyle shot. Paul Bissonnette, who's in the lineup tonight, will go off for the slack. He's going to break a stick here, Paul Bissonnette, as the play goes to the net. Oh, this is, I'm sorry, this is the block at the very end. That's Michael Stone turning. I, I don't understand the technique of guys anymore. And I was talking this about the Sharks coaches. We were talking about when Adam Burrish got hurt. So instead of turning to the side, why do you want to expose all that area? when you just If you just stand straight up and go in the shooting lane, you probably aren't going to get hurt. Sharks power play trying to break out of an 0-9 slump. Boyle on the wing, Marlowe, and it's same by Byzantine. And this is the type of things you want to try to develop those good habits and certainly get a good feeling about a confident feeling going into the playoffs, get the power play on track. Miami mishandled there, but the Sharks get it away, and now Marlowe with speed into Joe Thornton. Thornton across, wanted Pavelski, and an alert stick there by Ekman Larson, and it goes out of play. One of the things that the coaching staff want the power play to do is to be aggressive, taking the puck to the net in every opportunity. Now, Joe Thornton, it's it's in his DNA. He's just going to pass the puck, period. But when you've got guys driving to the net, as a coaching staff, you're going to keep stressing to everybody, no matter who they are, get the puck to the net. So you've got that pressure going there. Test the goalie early. That looks like a freshly shorn Joe Thornton. He is. Because the playoff beards start after this game, technically, don't they? And they well, with Joe Thornton, he could have shaved this morning and he'd have a two-day growth growth. He, he, he has a noon shadow, amazing. not a 5 o'clock. It is amazing. Brent Burns now across the blue line. Sharks power play. Pavelski, he scores! His 40th goal of the season! Joe Pavelski having a career year. That's number 40, and the Sharks lead 1-0. Well, we were talking about it last night with Joe Pavelski. If the guys would be trying to feed him today to get number 40. But this is just a nice power play breakout. Entry into the zone wide, and there's that guy going to the net. You've got two men, actually. One in the back post. Joe Pavelski times this perfectly. He cuts in the middle. He's available. But you've got the outside speed, and Joe Pavelski... Boy, that's not a great angle, really, if you're Joe Pavelski to get your ideal shot, but somehow he's got that knack to find the net. What a shot, what a goal. Congratulations, Joe, on number 40. It comes in game number 82, but Joe Pavelski becomes only the fourth Shark in franchise history to record 40 goals in a season, joining Jonathan Chichu, Patrick Marlowe, and Owen Nolan. Welcome to the 40-goal club, Joe Pavelski. And, well, memorable in two ways. One, for Joe Pavelski getting his 40th. Also, for Mark Byzantine, it's the first goal he's ever given up in the NHL. So the Sharks cash in on the power play. Now Blasic up through center. Marlowe across the line, back for Pavelski. That's broken up, but Plasic is able to force it deep back into the Phoenix zone. Brent Burns and Dan Boyle get the assist. Here's the one-timer from the top of the slot by Brandon Gormley for Phoenix. As Dave Tippett is working some of his youngsters in the lineup that are up from Portland in the American League. 
3.43, time of the goal by Pavelski. Now Couture trying to set up Patrick Marlowe coming down the wing. And Doan back to center for Phoenix. Over the shark line, Mike Ribeiro, and he hits the post. Boy, that was a very good entry and scoring chance, A-plus scoring chance for the Coyotes there. Sharks D kind of backed in there and gave Ribeiro a lane right to the net. Miami catches a break as Mikel Botker's shot is saved. Now Antoine Vermette working in the corner against Boyle. Back to the line. Murphy's shot comes right back to him. And on the rebound, Bodker shoots it over the net. Couple of grade A chances there for Phoenix. Back comes Tyler Kennedy. He'll wrist one to the goal and wide. It rims all the way back to center ice. And you see one aspect of the Phoenix Coyotes offense. They're very good and very tenacious around the opposing net. Brad Stewart played Boku minutes last night because of the injury to Hannon in the first period. Stewart went over 23 minutes of ice time. Shark penalty coming up here as the puck gets to the net. Niemi a glove save. And now we'll have a power play for Phoenix. When we come back, Joe Pavelski, goal number 40. And this is why. Chopping the stick out of a guy's hands. He can't do that kind of stuff. That's David Moss who had the stick knocked out of his hands. It was a great little exchange during the break. The referee came over. Brad Stewart was kind of smiling in the penalty box. Going, yeah, I had no choice. It was going to be a three on two the other way. So Phoenix goes on the power play, and they've got a good one. Fourth best in the NHL. A couple of guys with 10 goals on the power play. Radim Verbata and Shane Doan, they share the team lead in that department. And if you're the Sharks, you want to work on your penalty killing, too, here heading to the playoffs. It's been good this year, ranked sixth out of 30. Keith Yandel up top, and the one-timer by Oliver ekman Larson missed. Bodker wants for Matt. It'll go all the way back to the line. ekman Larson. now Yandel. On the wing, the pass down low, and Don't trying to get it back out front, or at least into a scoring area. Goes all the way back to Yandel. Quick re-entry, and Vermette tied up by Wingles, and it's back out across the line. Ekman Larson, good puck movement by Phoenix to come right back in. Yandel takes it off a skate. Ekman Larson slips a pass ahead. Here's Antoine Vermette. They really toss it around with speed. Ekman Larson, and that was tipped just wide. They've got two terrific defensemen. They get a lot of points. And Back through to Niemi, made the save. Now grabbed and settled by Bodker. And Justin Braun skates up, takes it to center, chips it in, and gets it out. I'm going to finish saying Keith Yandel, Oliver Ekman, Larson, they do the majority of damage on the power play to get the puck to the net because of that ability to move up at the blue line. Now Ribeiro right to the stick of the back checking Logan Couture. Check that, it's Bracken Kearns, 38, not 39. And as the Coyotes move it back up, they're down to under half a minute left on this power play. And forced out again at center. You're also going to see people on the penalty kill in games like this that you might not normally right. see as Todd McClellan wants to keep everybody fresh in this game and take some minutes away from guys who need a little rest, right? Yep, and again, you've got to condition guys that you may be put in this position in the playoffs. So be ready to understand what you're supposed to do and play the penalty kill or the power play and something that you would normally be doing in the previous games. Pretty good penalty kill there by the Sharks as we're back to five on five. Rivero working from the far side boards. Now Martin Erad, who came over at the deadline from the Washington Capitals. Erad grinding it out with Brad Stewart down there. Comes out to Kyle Chipchura. Now Erat brings it around the net. Quickly up top. Gormley's shot is blocked by Shepard. Back down to David Moss. And Chipchura. Erat. As they work off the cycle against Vlasic. Vlasic gets that stick out, lunging toward the puck. Kept in by Phoenix. And the wrist shot by Moss to flex wide. Stewart battling Chip Chura on the boards. That allows Vlasic to get it up, but not out. And now Kennedy will have a chance to clear. He has to give it back to Vlasic. And now he'll back away as both teams need a line change. 
Ten and a half to go here in this opening period in Glendale. Sharks lead it one nothing on Pavelski is 40th as he's back on the ice now with Brent Burns and Joe Thornton. Bodker and Pavelski tried to wheel it back for Irwin and did as Matt was able to adjust and keep that in. Now it ricochets to the right point side. Braun for Thornton. Up top it's Irwin. On the wing, Pavelski scores! Joe Pavelski! 2-0 Sharks! That was a nifty bit of offense. Some terrific puck and player movement by the San Jose Sharks. I like this little play. Off the cycle, cut inside, create the space. Puck moves from one side, well, up to the middle, actually. One side of the ice to the middle. Quick little pass, beautiful one-time pass, and a super finish by Joe Pavelski. And here he goes again, folks. First two goals, and he's looking at the hat trick. Goal number 41. That was a nice bit of passing and finish by the Sharks and the great Joe Pavelski. Going back to last night, the Sharks have scored five in a row. Tablat with the natural hat trick in the third period. Pavelski with the first two goals here in the first half of the opening period. And the Sharks out to a 2 0 lead on the rookie Byzantine in goal for the Coyotes. And so far, it's been a baptism for him, a baptism of fire against a pretty high powered offense when they get going. And he just found that out. Irwin and Thornton get the assist at 9.56. On Pavelski, second of the game, 41st of the year. That was a rocket, too. I mean, it, it had a lot behind it. He got all of that and a great pass by Matt Irwin. Marlowe catching it in the neutral zone, but and then he's prevented from coming in. As the Coyotes come back, McMillan gets it to the net. A battle in front. The Emmy's down. He can't get his footing to get his pad across, but his defense helps him out to keep that puck from going in. He sure did. He was scrambling in the crease. It was almost as if one of his skates was caught. Shane Doan went right to the net, had a dynamite, not one, but two opportunities. But Dan Boyle and Matt Irwin really prevented the goal from happening. Shepard back the other way, trying to fight off the back check from McMillan. Now Hurdle leads it for Wingle. Tomas Hurdle takes a bump from Ekman, working off the boards behind the Phoenix net. Hurdle drops it behind the goal. Shepard's there. Hurdle comes in to help out James Shepard. Ribeiro able to fish it out. Vlasic jumps in down the boards. It hits Shepard, drops to his forehand. Pulls away, out front, Hurdle shot, and it's blocked by Erat. Good shift here for this third line for San Jose. They've got the Coyotes in their own end, and finally, it comes out across the line. 12 minutes gone here in the first period. Sharks on top, 2-0, and taking it to Phoenix here now. Out shooting them 5-3. Kennedy circles back, builds up speed. Tyler Kennedy over the line. He'll whip a shot, saved by Byzantine. Back in front it comes. Off the bench is Braun. He'll wrist one where it's blocked by Korpakoski. And quickly Phoenix attacking, but Chipchura denied by Braun. Right. Justin Braun took away that space real quick, didn't he? Puck out of play. It's the big Pavelski with a big first period here in the desert. Final true stories. Talking natural hat tricks. Three goals in a row by the same player without anyone from either team scoring in between. Martin Hamlet did it last night in the third period. Joe Pavelski did it back in January in that memorable game in Tampa. Two natural hat tricks for the Sharks. They'd only had two ever in franchise history before this season started to this year. And well, <laughs> Joe Pavelski is two thirds of the way to another one here in this first period. He's got both Sharks goals, they're up two nothing. Deschardins backhander, Byzantine down with the stick to stop it. Kearns runs into Bissonette. And this will skip through the neutral zone. Stewart nicely to his defense partner, Justin Braun. Todd McClellan making a change on defense last night when he rested Mark Edward Blasic. Blasic wasn't injured, and he played every game until last night, just giving him a night off. And then when Scott Hannon was shaken up on that hit by Patrick Bortolo, 
He was unable to go tonight. McClellan had to make a change on defense, brought Placid back in. And you see the defense pairs that have resulted. Tom McClellan said after the game last night, he didn't think Hannon was too bad as far as that collision with Bortolo went. And certainly looking forward to Hannon returning for game one, whenever that is, against the LA Kings in San Jose. My guess is it would be Wednesday or Thursday, but it's only a guess. We won't know until the schedule comes out from the NHL, probably late tomorrow night. Couture trying to settle that as it came off his stick hard at center ice. And Chip Chura now back for the Coyotes as we come up on six minutes to go in this first period. A wrist shot from the wing by McMillan skips over the net. Back for Kyle Chip Chura. Puts on the brakes, trying to shake off Jason Demers. Got a step on him. Demers digging in to stay with him. Now at the front of the net, it goes just wide. Classic tied up on what could have been a hook by Brandon McMillan. Play goes on as it's forced out by Kachul. It's interesting when you watch the way that the Phoenix Coyotes play because this is a nice test for the Sharks going against the LA Kings because the Phoenix Coyotes play heavy in front, tough in front of the opposition net as well. And the Sharks defense and forwards are being tested in this first period about playing in front of their own net and helping their goaltender out. Hurdle, looking for Wingles on that far side. Ribeiro intercepts. Now he goes crashing into the boards with Tommy Wingles. And now the puck underneath Wingles on that far side. Get a quick whistle from the officials. It was actually Braun down there covering it up. We'll be back in Glendale. Well, a look back at just a few of the snapshot moments of brilliance in this 82-game NHL regular season for the San Jose Sharks. Probably, I'm going to guess at this point, one of the most difficult seasons in the career of Dan Boyle after that hit by Max Lapierre in St. Louis early in the year. Caused him to miss a big chunk of the season. He probably didn't miss enough of the season, and he admitted as much that he came back early. The boy is Dan Boyle rounding into form now. The second assist on Pavelski's first goal tonight. That's eight points in his last ten games for number 22, and he couldn't be getting back to the top of his game at a better time. Well, it was interesting. We talked to him last night on the plane, and I said to him, I said, you know, I I thought I saw Dan Boyle out in the ice tonight. And he said, you know, so did I. I, I, I think he's coming back. And, and you know you know where you really see it is, is yeah. with the skating yeah. and, and the decision making. Absolutely right. That, that's, that, that's the big key. You hit it right on the head. It's the decision making of Dan Boyle that when he's on, it is quick, it's decisive, and it is the right move. Flipped in by Erat as we're under five minutes left here in this first period. This is not the final game of the year for Phoenix. They have Dallas here tomorrow night. In fact, the Stars were checking into their rooms as the Sharks were checking out of the same hotel here in Glendale this afternoon. That game tomorrow here at Jobbing.com Arena, and it had the potential to be mammoth had Dallas not won last night over St. Louis 3-0 to end the wild card race in the West. Here's a puck to the net, and the Emmy able to keep it out as Jeff Halpern was right in front looking for garbage, and Matt Irwin there too helping to help out Antini Emmy. The second time Irwin has been involved in some scrambled net play. Now Connor Murphy works it up ice, and Korpakoski can't connect with Bodker at the line as Joe Thornton weaves his way through his own zone, hands it off to Mark Edward Blasek. Joe Thornton's assist <laughs> on that second Pavelski goal. Joe Thornton's 65th assist of the year, seventh year in a row that the Sharks captain has gone over 60 assists. Or seventh year in his career, not in a row. But still, another huge year for Joe Thornton. And again, especially league-wide, the people who cover the NHL are so used to Joe Thornton being great every year, he doesn't get talked about enough. It's been another terrific season for number 19. Yeah, there are just some guys out there, aren't there, that just, they're always good. And so they don't get the praise. That you kind of take them for granted. He's got 76 points. Yeah, it's absolutely a great year. Second, second in assist to only Sidney Crosby and only by a couple back. Stewart 
And now Couture trying to get it flat. Puck really bouncing around here. And I'll tell you, in all the times we've been here at Glendale, especially the last few years, this building has been freezing cold. It's not no, tonight. Not today. It's yeah. warm in here. Yeah, usually it's it's colder. You try to bring that temperature down to hopefully do what you can to keep the ice as solid as possible and the puck from bouncing like it does. And that's the one thing that maybe don't realize the people who watch the game that that puck is frozen but once it gets back out in the ice it thaws out a little bit and then when that happens it starts to bounce there's a puck that's forced into a crowd by Verbata kept in along the boards by Chris Summers and now out of play well there's nothing like playoff hockey it starts next week Sharks and the LA Kings and tickets for round one are on sale now. Go to sjsharks.com slash tickets to purchase them. You can also buy them at the box office at SAP Center. Act now. Seats are very limited. Sharks open up against LA, but we don't have a schedule yet. Likely Wednesday or Thursday at SAP Center for game one. Dan Boyle just went to the locker room, Randy, but uh, followed quickly behind by the great Mike Aldridge, so we're looking at we think it's an equipment issue that Dan will get fixed. Quite often it's the edge of a skate, right? Yeah, yeah very often. Get that skate off, get it on the skate sharpening yeah. machine, put a new edge on it, you're good to go. Maybe you don't even miss a ship. Yeah, when Mike goes, it's usually the skate at the edge. Could be a broken blade, Mike will replace very quickly as well. Desjardins steering it in. Runs into David Moss, and Moss able to, with help, get it back out of the zone, but the Sharks Running the show here so far in this first period. Out shooting the Desert Dogs 8-4, outscoring them 2 to nothing. Braun, he'll send it in deep. Byzantine trying to slow it down. 21-year-old Mark Byzantine. A first round pick of the Coyotes back in 2010 from the Niagara Sea Dogs of the Ontario Hockey League. Two-time goalie for Canada's World Junior Team. In yep. fact, Remember in 2011, he got to the gold medal game when Canada lost to Russia. Byzantine was in the net for that game. Kind of took the job over partway through that tournament. And he gets his first taste of the show here in Glendale tonight. Is that the one where the Russians came back and scored three? It scored five in the third? Yeah. Oof. Ouch. They asked Byzantine about that. He said, there's nothing to say. <laughs> He's right. At the end of the first period here in Glendale, it's the San Jose Sharks leading the Phoenix Coyotes by a score of 2 to nothing. Stick around. Brody Brazil and Curtis Brown will be in our Sportsnet Central studios coming up. And then Drew will be back here in the desert to talk to Joe Pavelski. National Hockey League, his assist in the first period, his 76th point of the year. And he's our Ford right choice. Well, you can't go wrong when you're talking about the Sharks captain. We just talked about him in the first period. Everything he does, sometimes you take for granted just how terrific he is because you keep seeing it year after year after year. You go all the way back to when Joe was picked, or at least I should say traded for by Doug Wilson. And he's there's, sorry, there's the all-time assist list and Joe just tied Bobby Clark for 24th. Next on the list, Denny Savard, but that'll have to wait till next season. But all those names, Savard, Phil Esposito, Nicholas Lidstrom, Joe will undoubtedly take all those down next year and pass them and move further up the list toward an eventual stop in Toronto at the Hockey Hall of Fame, right? Absolutely. There's really no doubt he will be a Hall of Famer once his career is over. But that's still a ways away as, of course, Joe was signed to an extension this year. That three-year extension will kick in Next ball, so plenty more jumbo to come. Underway in the second period here. Sharks up 2-0 on the Joe Pavelski goals. And if the Sharks were looking for Pavelski in the first period to try and get him his 40th, I'm sure much to the dismay of Mark Byzantine, they're probably going to be looking for him <laughs> now to get him a hat trick. Yes, they will. On the other side of things, I'm sure Dave Tippett Wants a little more out of his group in the second period. As Shane Doan gets it to the wing and the shot just goes wide. Back to Brent Burns. And he hit the post. You're kidding me. 
Oh. We, we should have been counting them. I'll bet it's over 10 goalposts. And there's a save by Niemi off Yandel. Over the last two weeks, I bet you it's more than that. It's, it's at least 13, 15 in that area. Once again, terrific shot. Beats Mark Byzantine, much like the Joe Pavelski shot from that angle. Goes for the wide side. Brent Burns hits another post. I asked him the other night, how many posts do you think that's been the last few weeks? And he ran a dozen. It's got to be a running joke in the dressing room right now. Yeah, unbelievable. He just keeps playing it off the post. And Joe Thornton keeps talking him up, saying, they're going to come, big guy. They're going to come. Be nice if they came next week. Yeah, exactly. And then the ensuing weeks after. Pavelski to Thornton. He splits the D. Joe walks in, and Byzantine makes the save and covers the rebound. Joe Thornton coming late through the neutral zone. That backed off the defense because the Sharks have been up on the play. Joe Pavelski finds him. Just a little bit of a gap, a little seam, and Joe, Pave Joe Thornton finds it. You don't see Joe deking through four guys very often, but a smart player takes what the opposition gives, and that's exactly what Joe Thornton did there. Nice save by Mark Visentine. Got out of the crease and challenged the Sharks captain. Thornton with 11 goals and 65 assists. Kowalski digging away. It ends up back on Thornton's stick. And he saucer passes it backhand to Boyle, who's put down hard by Korpakoski. A follow shot from Pavelski, another one from Thornton, and this one will rim out. Burns, and he lost the puck. Bodker, see by the Emmy. And out of play. Just overhandle the puck a little bit too much. Michael Bodker, Kyle Bodker, right there for the chance. And Antti Niemi gets tested in the second period. Fights off the high shot, off the blocker. Didn't know where the puck was. That's why he goes back to where he, how he went back to the net. Puts his hands on top and his arms on top of the crossbar so the puck can't sneak down his back and into the net. Very aware. You be aware of your surroundings and even when you're un unsure where the puck is. The Emmy with 38 wins, third best in the NHL, behind only Marc-Andre Fleury of Pittsburgh and the league leader, leader Semyon Varlamov of the Colorado Avalanche, who had last night off in that 5-1 Sharks win over Patrick Waugh's Avalanche. Broken up in the neutral zone, quickly the Coyotes come back in, helper in a shot, and the Emmy stopped that. And Wingles catching up to it now down the right side. Drops it. Hurdle shot it off a deflection. It goes over the net. Back to the net again. And Byzantine will cover as Hurdle stands right there hoping for a rebound. Tomas said after the game last night, it's become a pretty big quote post-game. He was asked about playing the Kings in the first round of the playoffs. And he says, I not very much like L.A. this season. He and uh, quite a few San Jose Shark fans, but he's got a little bit more of a personal stake in it. Of course, the LA Kings captain, Dustin Brown, was the one that delivered the injury to Tomas Hurdle. Knocked him out for his long period of time. He was having a terrific rookie year. And of course, that's going to be one of the major storylines well, going into game one, certainly. Without a doubt. But as with every playoff series, the storyline in game two tends to be what happened in game one. As Yandel puts one toward the net, blocked by Braun. Stone, and now behind the goal, the Coyotes with something working here. Ribeiro trying to find an opening to get it through to Yandel, who had gone all the way to the front of the net. And now hustling after it is Kennedy, but Yandel will control it and send it up ice to Mike Ribeiro. Verbata back to Ribeiro, can't get a shot away. Stick by Justin Braun. Yandel, the leading point getter for Phoenix this year. One of only three defensemen leading his team. And Niemi makes the save as he came out to the crease at the edge of it to challenge. Now Verbata again, and Ribeiro couldn't find it. Good shift here for Phoenix. Heckman Larson, Verbata, and Ribeiro stoned by Niemi. That's a good save by Antti Niemi as the Sharks lose coverage. And now Irwin able to settle things down and skate it out of the zone. Right through open ice. Irwin chips to the corner and then he squeezed off the puck. By Connor Murphy. Shane Doan over the San Jose line for Chip Chura. It skipped through to the front of the net, poked away by Niemi as Brandon McMillan was after it. Again, a back check not sorted out very well. And you're right, Phoenix has got a little momentum going here. 
Couture trying to get through the defense. And no go that time against Gormley. Now Ekman Larson. We're live in the second period in Glendale. Final game of the season for the Sharks. And the playoffs start next week. Game 81 for the Coyotes who host Dallas tomorrow. Mikel Botker. Yandel shoots Niemi the save as he picked it up through the screen. Well, Antti Niemi, as you heard Kevin Curtis talk to Brody Brazil and Curtis Brown in the pregame, showed talk about what is Antti Niemi doing right now. He is auditioning for the role to start the playoffs. Well, pretty good audition going so far for the Sharks' number one net miner. Good save after good save, out challenging, no rebound. Seems very aware of what's going on as far as where the puck is going after he makes the save. That's just as important as making the save in the NHL. Not gonna try and read Todd McClellan's mind, but I would be surprised if Miami wasn't the starting goalie in game one, wouldn't you? Yeah, he's got a Stanley Cup ring. I mean, that's, that has to count for quite a bit of weight when making that decision if you're the coaching staff. But again, I've talked about it before with the coaching staff that you get, and I, you know, just when you talk to them, there is a lot of discussion that goes on. These decisions aren't made just by Todd McClellan going, yep, we're going to do this. He gets everybody's input. He values the input of a very smart group of hockey people. From Wayne Thomas, assistant general manager, goalie coach, Corey Schwab, of course, goalie consultant for the team, and of course, the outstanding coaching staff that he has. A lot of discussion goes into almost every decision they make. And that's no knock on Alex Stalock, who I thought after Havlat was the second best shark last night. Stalock was absolutely splendid, made some big saves against Colorado, 32 on the night. And should there be, and I'm presuming that Miami would go in game one, should there be a stumble there, I don't think the coaching staff was, would hesitate at all within a game or after a loss to change that minders. If it's warranted. If warranted. I mean, you look at the Vancouver series last year, when the Vancouver Canucks changed goaltenders after game two, they didn't need to. They shouldn't have changed Roberto Luongo to Corey Schneider. Roberto Luongo wasn't the reason the Sharks were up 2 nothing. There you go. A loss does not equate exactly. bad goaltending necessarily. Exactly. A lot more to it than just that guy there, but he has a lot to do with it. Stewart. And that comes out, and Desjardin recovers it at center ice. Byzantine. From Waterdown, Ontario, originally. Mark Byzantine, 21 years of age, getting his first NHL start in his first call-up to the league. Up from Portland in the American Hockey League. Still have faced Bracken Kearns, of course, yep. up from Worcester, and a number of these Sharks players who have done time in the American League. Verbata fell to his knees, and it's punched out across the line through center, and Gormley gets it back across. Not in the Coyotes lineup. Some names that are familiar. Zbigniew Mahalik, David Schlemko, Martin Hansel, Rob Claykammer. Derek Morris, Mike Smith, the injured starting goaltender for the Desert Dogs. And Tyler Gaudette, who's also up from the minors. Not seeing action here today, but they're back-to-back. -back. And some of those players, the uninjured ones, not playing today. As Niemi makes a nice save there off David Moss. He continues to sparkle here. Good was, period for the Phoenix Coyotes. That was actually done with that one-timer. Now off the boards, Chip Jura want to don't again. It comes back to Ekman Larson. Saved, and then on the follow shot by McMillan. He's unable to put it on target. That third save, though, the third opportunity for a save. A very good one. Oliver Ekman Larson in tight. Ekman Larson across to his right. And a save by Niemi. Kicks it right to Shepard, who's able to clear. This will be icing. A lot of good saves by Antti Niemi. And again, looks solid doing it. Nice play out high, one-timer. Big shot by Shane Doan, right low on the ice. The right pad saved. Sharks, again, you've got coverage, but you don't have enough coverage. You've got to be up, closing time and space. Even though that, that area, as Todd McClellan calls his timeout, that area is a long way to go if you're a defenseman. 
you have to communicate or hand off Shane Doan to the forward. So McClellan using the timeout to rest his group that's been on a while on this icing, and they can't get off. Todd McClellan is talking to his guys about defensive zone coverage right now. Time for our Coors Light Cold Hard Fact. Looking at plus minus rating by a defenseman in Sharks history. Mark Edward Lassick plus 31 going into this game and he will obliterate the previous best mark held by Mike Rathje of plus 23 back in the 0102 season. Brian Marchment wasn't far back. And then of course Vlasic also had a plus 21 year. Classic has developed into the Sharks' number one defenseman. And, of course, was a key part of Team Canada's gold medal performance at the Winter huge, Olympic Games. Huge part. You heard Jamie Baker talk about it. Mark Edward Classic is a very confident player. And Antti Niemi gets the stop and the stoppage in play. And we'll take a break. Come back to Phoenix in a moment. The game, this is from Steve Russian, the author and sports writer, who said, quote, by the age of 18, the average American has witnessed 200,000 acts of violence on television, most of them <laughs> occurring during game one of the NHL playoff series. <laughs> it is definitely a different time of year. It is the best time of year. And when it starts next week, you, you, you I don't know about you, but whenever we're not doing games, well, I do know about you because we're often together on the road. We're all glued to watching it. It doesn't matter the series because it's the best hockey of the year. Yeah, it's it's why we do what we do. It's why we're hockey fans. And, and I'll alter that quote, that it's extremely physical. But, yeah, sometimes it, it crosses the line. But it's just the best time to be a hockey fan, no question about it. But you don't appreciate it without the buildup of the season because that's where all the storylines develop and then they come to fruition or sometimes completely change in the span of a couple of weeks. Here's a turnover. Couture trying to get around Keith Yandel who made a nice adjustment. Hey, spot, you know, you look at those days now, I mean, the playoffs, yes, very, very physical. But think about when Larry Robinson played. Here's a three-on-two attack led by Joe Thornton in for Burns. And he couldn't settle that rolling puck for a one-time shot. Plays it back out in front. Pavelski to Thornton, who fanned. Again, that puck won't sit. And Burns missed on the one-timer. As again, it wasn't flat. Stewart will get it to the net. Off the save by Byzantine. It trickled just wide. Just missed. Pavelski to Thornton. And now Burns takes it behind the net. Out front wants Thornton. Knocked away by a Phoenix stick and out to center. All right, when the Sharks get going in the offensive zone, they hunt, don't they? They get after the puck. Whoops. Thornton just lost it there. And now quickly the Coyotes come ahead. Antoine Vermette loads up. And this will come through and Niemi got the leg out to make the save off Korpikoski. Very good save by Antti Niemi. Terrific reaction off a broken stick shot. The pass. Murphy to Vermette to Ekman Larson. He'll catch, shoot. And that's a by Niemi. Vodka back on the point, and Niemi eats that one up again. The puck's bouncing a little bit for the Sharks in the offensive zone. Joe Thornton tries to hit Brent Burns, which gets deflected, just bounces over the stick, and he misses getting an in tight opportunity. Broken stick ends up as a real nice pass, spin around shot. There's a great save by Antti Niemi, who has looked super. Facing 16 shots so far. And Brent Burns is near it. He's around it, but the puck's just not sitting down for him yet. And when it is, it's hitting the post. Yeah. That run around for Dan Boyle. Boyle in a little trouble now. Coyotes get the puck back. Erat sends it to Ekman Larson. He'll load up. And it's blocked in front of the San Jose net. Matt Irwin doing a nice job on Mike Ribeiro. Oops. Through the skates of Desjardins, who tried to kick it ahead. It is hopping, that puck. Yeah. Murphy. And now Ribeiro. Gets it deep. Desjardins there, but the Coyotes with the puck. Nice kick up by Erat. Verbata, stick handles. Far side, they score! Mike Ribeiro makes it 2-1. Kind of saw this coming in this period because of the defensive zone coverage by the Sharks. The defense, Matt Irwin and Dan Boyle, they get lost here. They get looking at one guy. Mike Ribeiro is just going to slide over through the slot. He's going to go back door, and you've got two defensemen playing one guy, playing the pass instead of being aggressive. 
Get your head on a swivel, turn and find guys. Communicate between Dan Boyle and Matt Irwin. One guy should say, I got him. The other guy turns and finds Mike Ribeiro at the net. It should have been Irwin on Ribeiro and then Dan Boyle on the puck carrier for Adam Bravada. And it's Ribeiro's 16th of the year from Bravada and Erad at 10-22. So Phoenix stops the bleeding. And they get right back into this game, down by a goal. Tomas Hurdle, he will get it flat, and then his pass to Shepard, taken away by Halpern. Dumped into the shark zone, classic turns, Bissonette's there, but he plays it over to Demers. Jason Demers, a career year, five goals, 29 assists. Went into the game tied with Dan Boyle for the defense points lead, but Boyle got an assist on Pavelski's first goal, so Demers won back of his teammate. Stewart kind of fooling Braun with that reverse. Now it's collected by Marlowe. Patrick, nice skating move, takes the shot, Byzantina blocker save. What did Marlowe score a beauty last night against Colorado? That was almost unstoppable. A booming slap shot. Chip Chura intercepted by Braun. Martin Havlat trying to get it out off the boards on that far side pass Stone. And now finally to Marlowe. Back for Couture. Over to Braun. Back for Logan on the wing, but he'll bail out on a line chain. Eight minutes left here in the second period in Glendale. 2-1, Sharks. As this crowd happy to see the Coyotes score a goal and get back in this one. Of course, two, three days ago, this was shaping up to be a huge game for Phoenix. Had they been able to stay in that wild card race, but it wasn't to be. Let's just go back to the goal. We're just going to highlight the guys for the San Jose Sharks you have to watch, okay? That's the guys you have to watch. Go ahead and roll, okay? As the play moves forward, Dan Boyle's got his man. Ribeiro goes to the net. Now frees it for a second. He's to see those two guys now. What are they doing? They're looking at the puck area. Nobody's picked up Ribeiro. Go ahead. So Dan Boyle has Ribeiro coming off the glass, coming off the boards. He should have stayed with him and declared or handed off and let Matt Irwin handle it. But they didn't communicate. That's why the goal was scored. Ekman Larson back over to Yandel. Oh, check that. It's not Yandel on that far side. It is Murphy. As Verbata swings it to this side. Good effort by Ekman Larson. Couldn't hold it in. And Boyle now across the blue line. And he'll send it in. Tomas Hurdle in after it against Erat. Verbata to the side for Ekman Larson. His up pass blocked by Wingles back into the zone. Here's Erat. Verbata crossing the line. Takes the shot in the Emmy. The blockers save, and it's out of play. Mike Rubero with the 2-1 goal. It's it off with what we think is the goal of the year. Shorthanded effort against the New York Rangers. What a goal by Logan Couture, a guy who just continues to get better and better every year. And what makes him such a terrific hockey player is his work without the puck, too. 66 blocks this year coming into this game. Tied for the most among Sharks forwards. Does not buy into my theory about blocking shots, without a doubt. He is a guy that gets in front of him, and like everybody else who's winners, they believe you got to get in front of him if you're going to win the championship. Here's Jason Demers with a ton of ice down the right wing. Now he slows up and tries to execute a pass to Brent Burns. Pavelski, as Demers comes out from behind the net, he just lost the puck as he was going to wrap it around, I think. Now Pavelski again. Burns goes to the net. Thornton shoots. Whew. And a save by Byzantine. Oh, Thornton ripping one. A nice pad save. Thornton again. Demers. And he'll place it to the net. Byzantine, a nice stop off Burns' deflection. Byzantine feeling confident right now. Yeah, he's settling in. Yep. Had to be huge nerves in the first period. You wouldn't be human if you weren't nervous playing your first NHL game as a goalie, no less. Yeah, it's only your dream of a lifetime. <laughs> yeah. I'm here, and oh, here comes Joe Pavelski. And he needs one for 40. Yikes. Doan almost lost it. Jardin would have been on the way to the net. 
As Yandel sends it to center. Sharks get it back. Kennedy on the re-entry. Goes wide. Now cuts to the inside. And he shot it just wide. Desjardin behind the net for Kennedy. Desjardin goes out front. So does Kearns. Kennedy will bump it back up to Brad Stewart. And again, that puck just took a bad bounce for him. Great idea, though. Yep. Doan flicks it back for Chipchura. Stewart. Kennedy. Where he had to be. Brings it back in again. Good shift for this group. Puck's deep and trying to build some momentum. Coming off a shift where they gave up a goal. Stewart. Trickles through. Byzantine finds it just in time to cover it with his glove. 5-10 left here in the second period in Glendale. If they did, here would be your matchups. We already know the San Jose LA matchup is a lock. That's not the case for the others in the West. And we did a little advanced calculus and we broke down what the matchup would be for the Sharks if it was like last year, where in the West one played eight, two played seven, and so on. If it were the format of last year, it would be San Jose and Chicago in the first round, based on the points right now. San Jose starting in Chicago. Correct. Blackhawks with more points in the standings. But this this game, though, would... No, actually, San Jose oh, with San Jose more points. Would... So be, be at SAP Center, hosting the Blackhawks. That's right. The Sharks Chicago's with 109, got... Hawks with 107. And the, and the Hawks had lost today, and the Sharks would have... They would solidify that home spot. Couture... And a stick save for Byzantine, and it goes up out of play. As it is, it's the Los Angeles Kings. And it speaks to what the oh. league had in mind here, and that's regionalizing the first round of the playoffs, keeping it potentially for the first two rounds in the playoffs, right in California, it could be, if the Sharks yes. were to beat L.A. and Anaheim were to emerge. Well, it's going to be a great series. It will be the third series between the Kings and the Sharks. Tied at one each. Last year's heartbreaking seven-game loss. The Sharks obviously want to avenge that. It's going to be fun. And they've set themselves up in a better position in one area, and that's that this time they have home ice. And it was very much about home ice last year. Home team won every game. And the team that scored first also won every game. They won their last game against the Los Angeles Kings. Yeah. Sharks did not lose at home last year in the playoffs. If you went to all the home games, you'd think, hey, great. We didn't lose. Kennedy coming up to Phoenix. Boyle setting up, and his shot is blocked. Just tried to change the angle there. He knew the penalty was coming. So no harm if it is blocked. And now we'll get the call. Only the third minor in this game. You hear the referee's call. Phoenix number 12, minor penalty hooking. There you are. That's decisive. That's that's a bold statement. That's Ian Walsh. He's Ian very Walsh. decisive. Yeah, very good. Paul Bissonnette going back in the penalty box. Not very happy about it. Biz nasty as he is on the old uh, internet, the websites. The, the Twitter machine. The Twitter machine. You're going to see the hook coming up. Well, I guess you saw it right there. I agree with Paul Bissonnette on that one. The kids, they love Biz nasty out there. He's got several hundred thousand followers. Marlow now as the Sharks are one for one on the power play coming into this one. Patrick trying to control it going to the net. Now Pavelski out to Burns. Good keep. And now to Boyle. Burns, one-timer, blocked in front. And cleared. Boyle moves it to Patrick Marlow. Hands it off to Thornton. Joe back to Marlow. Pavelski backs away, gets himself some ice. Just, the puck's not flat. What else can you say? Thornton. Now Marlow, he'll get it through in Byzantine shot. No screen that time as Pavelski had moved away looking perhaps for a rebound. As Patrick Marlow does a nice thing here. What he does, just keep it frozen for a sec. He's just going to read the path right there of the forward. Go ahead and roll it and then take what the opposition gives. Forward's going to take the path to take the, to the pass away to the point. So Patrick Marlow says, I got a guy at the net. I'm just going to flip it there. Again, being able to instantly recognize the situation and try to capitalize on it. It's a sign of a good hockey player. 
Arnold last night scoring against Colorado. Tied Pavel Bure all time. 437 goals. Here's a chance for Hurdle. Back for Irwin. Havlat coming off his sixth career hat trick last night. First is a shark. And there's a shot that just missed by Demers. Havlat out front. Back from Couture. Now a shot in front. Byzantine dives out with the glove and covers. Nifty puck movement by the San Jose Sharks. One of the areas this year have been concerned and a, a real problem for the Phoenix Coyotes has been their penalty kill. Their 26th in the National Hockey League. And what they have to start doing better is getting in and blocking shots. But Tomas Hurdle right in front tries to sleep, sneak by his man. He's looking for a goal. He wants that one to get himself in the groove going into the playoffs. Now Demers off the faceoff when Couture. He's tied up there. And Helper is able to get it out. You want to get it away from pressure right away. And that pass was right yeah, into pressure. Right David back. Moss was right on Couture. No options for Logan Couture there. Helper. And that'll get toward the net. Moss now out of the corner. And the Emmy with that short side cover. Ten seconds left in the Bissonette minor. team will take care of the rest of the penalty kill all by itself. So the Sharks won for two on their power play tonight. They maintain their 2-1 lead. Yandel back against Tommy Wingles. Now Shepard cuts it back for Braun. He'll let it go, and it's kicked out by Byzantine. Korpakoski into the zone. Drops for Vermette. Botker in front, Vermet looking for him, and it went through him. Blocked by Shepard, and now up the ice, Wingle. Three on two, Tommy Wingle around the net. Trying to hand it off to Braun in the corner. Michael Stone in the way, now Vermet there too with Shepard and Wingle. Time of wasting as no one seems willing to move that puck, and we get the whistle. Here's one thing you got to be able to sort out: just keep it frozen right here. You've got communication. You know, Logan Couture is being communicated with. I oh, can't get it going. Anyway, go ahead and roll it, guys. Logan Couture is the late guy coming in. Now Logan slides off of his guy, and now he's going to go to the same man. He can't get back to the wide man, who is his guy in the middle. Cut to the cut to the outside. The communication was there. So once you identify, once you lock on, you've got to make sure you stay on your guy. I apologize for the technical difficulties with my hands on that telestration. <laughs> That's not a good way to it's, it's not a good way to end the season. Poor telestration. That's all right. We'll get that fixed for the playoffs. That's, that's everybody's working on their game here in a game like yeah. this. That's uh, you got you got to bring it no matter what the situation is. 82 games it doesn't matter. You got to make sure you bring it every time you're on the air. Fertile, nice battle off the boards to come out with the puck. But then the Coyotes get it going the other way as we're under a minute left. Yandel, he'll let go, and the Emmy with the glove save. Well, one guy has brought it, well, several, but Antti Niemi has been strong. He 18 can't. saves yeah. now. And in the second period, he's really been tested, and he has looked very good. He is more efficient, he's more relaxed, he's calmer in the net than he was certainly in the Anaheim game. And you, know, you have to credit the work that he puts in the day after the Anaheim game, he was the last guy out on the ice at the optional practice. He and Tyler Kennedy just trying to get better. And the thing that you always notice about Niemi is it doesn't matter if it's a game like the Anaheim game where he was pulled, giving up three goals on 19 shots, or that game at Madison Square Garden where he really stole it for the Sharks. His emotions are the same. He's the same person. It doesn't matter. It doesn't mean that he's... Doesn't have a burning desire to win. He just knows that you have to take the good with the bad. Shot by Verbata, saved by Niemi again. Rebound, Erat missed the net. Phoenix with a strong push here late in this period. Verbata loads up. The pass is blocked on the shot as Irwin got in the way of Erat's bid. And it's cleared down the ice. And this is going to do it for period number two. Good period for Phoenix. Really good period for Antti Niemi. He's got not make it 20 saves 
up on the board as Niemi has his best period in some time for the Sharks. That's it for the second. It's the Sharks two and the Coyotes one. Stick around to we'll check in with Brody and Curtis in the studio for a playoff picture update. And then Drew and I will be back here to pick our favorite moments of this past regular season. For the third period, there's Mike Rivera who scored the goal for the Desert Dogs in that second period. The Coyotes this year are 8-3-2 and two when he scores a goal. And he's also the leading scorer against the Sharks this year. Ribs, as he's known by his teammates. A goal and three points this year against the Sharks. Of course, Sharks fans remember him for his many days with the Dallas Stars. And he'll face his former team tomorrow night in the Coyotes finale here against Dallas. Stars heading to the playoffs for the first time in six years. And there's a lot of excitement in the Dallas area over that, and rightfully so. That's an exciting hockey team. They're going to be a tough out. Underway with the third. And the Sharks score! Logan Couture! Wow. <laughs> Before you're able to get your popcorn and your drink, sit down. Logan Couture increases the Sharks' lead to two goals, restores it, I should say. A good four check, not a good play up the middle by the Phoenix Coyotes, but Dan Boyle becoming Dan Boyle again. He reads the play, he gets up, and he's looking for Logan Couture. Look at Logan Couture. He gets his stick down on the ice. He reads the play as well. That's two just real smart hockey players hooking up, and the Sharks 13 seconds in get a big goal. Couture celebrating his own bobblehead night last night with three assists. And he gets his 23rd goal of the year here just 13 seconds into the third period. And the Sharks have a 3-1 lead. Boyle gets the only assist. That's Boyle's second point of the game. Now Doan trying to thread the needle through to McMillan. Arlo on the boards. He's upended and they score! Boom! Shane Doan quickly gets the goal right back. Wow, what a start to the period. That was about 30 seconds after Logan Couture scores. Another good forecheck, good spin off by the Phoenix Coyotes. They're able to go to work. Two guys hustling in the corner. Just a chip out to Shane Doan who snaps it quick. We talked about Shane Doan in the opener. The heart and soul of the Phoenix Coyotes. Talk about playing for pride. That's what the Coyotes captain does. Big snap right past Antti Niemi, and it's back to a one-goal game. 31 seconds apart. As Doan nets his 22nd. Good forecheck there by the Phoenix Coyotes. Well, what's the old adage? The shift after a goal is scored, right? Yep. Most important one. And Phoenix with a nice response to that Couture goal. Right there, you want to shoot the puck if you're Tommy Wingo, so shoot that puck as soon as you can. Now it's a two-on-one. Wingo. And a save by Byzantine. Let's go back to the goal. Good work by Kyle Chipchira on this play. You should go into the zone. Four-check cap, but it's going to be first over the puck. They get their nice spin-off, and then right now you're going to close. Jachira gets in there. Good work along the boards, and look at Shane Don't come over. Key on this play, Shane Don't comes over, and he is able to snap it quick. It's on his stick and off the stick. Sharks aren't able to shrink that, close off the space that allowed Shone to get this Don't to get that pass. Now Radim Verbata to Martin Erath. 3-2, Sharks lead. Vlasic over to Jason Demers. And he couldn't return the favor to Vlasic, but it'll take a good Shark bounce, no icing. Sharks with a slight edge on the shot counter. 23-22, Coyotes offside here. So Doan from Chipchura and McMillan at 44 seconds. And before that, it was Couture from Boyle at 13 seconds. I love how both teams have come out here. That's terrific stuff. We've talked about both teams wanting to play for pride and wanting to go out with a strong note, although the Coyotes have one more game left. The Sharks certainly want to increase their confidence about their game. 
think in some aspects they have, and then there's other aspects where they know that they have got to improve. Couture now with two goals and five points in his last three games. Irwin back on it for the Sharks. And David Moss seals off the boards. That allows the Coyotes to get the puck back. Halpern back in for Moss. At the side, Boyle banging away at it. And the Emmy had to hold the fort as Bissonette was crashing for a rebound, too. And almost went in short side. 19 Emmy had to have the pads right up against the post here. Just a to play towards the net. Dan Boyle tries to clear it. It almost deflects into the net off of Dan Boyle's stick. He didn't get everything he wanted, put the puck in the direction he wanted. Very close. Dan Boyle's always got that look coming off the ice. And why he's got that look, it's, it's him replaying the shift in his head all the time. Very smart player, student of the game. He watches all his shifts after every game. He's always thinking about how can he be better. Doan against Justin Braun. Couture will lob it up ice. Gets it to Shepard. Marlow comes across, but Doan on the back check. And he's got it going the other way now. Shane Doan. McMillan heads for the net. McMillan takes it behind the goal line. Around for Chip Chura. He whips it to the goal. Deflected. And he was leaning the other way, but it wasn't on net. Couture across for Braun. Up for Marlowe and in. We're live in the third period, three minutes deep. Two goals already scored in this third. By Couture for the Sharks and Shane Doan for Phoenix. Ribeiro. Back to the line. And the wrister by Gormley. Picked up by the Sharks. Pavelski now. Nicely done by Joe Pavelski to beat the pitch. Up for Wingles. He's got Havlad. He shoots just as Gormley got his stick in. Havlad back for Pavelski. And that's off of the blocker. Now Byzantine stays in. Vlasic to the net. Loose puck for Wingles. And Byzantine able to get to it ahead of the diving Tommy Wingles. Tommy Wingles. First off. Good play by Joe Pavelski in his own zone. Beats the pinch, and then this allows the flurry by the San Jose Sharks. And Tommy Wingles, where he has to be. You want to score goals, especially in the postseason, that's where you got to score. And a happy birthday to Tommy Wingles. It was 26 years ago on this day in 1988 in Evanston, Illinois, that Tommy Wingles was born. Happy birthday. Do you know where you were in 1988? Yes, I was working for Dave King and the Canadian Olympic team. In Calgary. Here's Hurdle now with Thornton. And the pass block. And the Coyotes get it. Do you know where you were at 2.30 this morning? I do. Yes. I know where you were. I know where Tommy Wingles was because I was with both of you. The fire alarm went off in the Sharks Hotel at 2.30 this morning. And the building was evacuated. We were all out in front for what, about a half an hour? Yeah. Until the fire department came and cleared the building. Here's Hurdle, and he just doesn't have the gas to get there. And Byzantine moves it up the ice. This game really opening up here in the third period. Team's trading chances. Here's Wingles again. Shoots. Byzantine the save to Chardon. And it pinballs off legs in front of the Phoenix net. And back come the Coyotes. Braun checked by Bissonette. Now Paul Bissonette, nice little flick pass he wanted. Halpern, nice. nice skating move by Stone, and Niemi with the save. It was opening up, or it has been opening up, I should say. Chances back and forth. Terrific little skating move by Mike Stone. Very nice. You're starting to see some individual efforts. You're starting to see both teams push the pace a little bit. It's fun to watch. Sharks are down a forward. Bracken Kearns yeah. did not come out for this third period, and the Sharks Media Relations Department informs us that his return is questionable as the shot goes over the Sharks' net. So that's not good news as the Sharks relying on Kearns for some offensive depth here right now and into the playoffs. Hopefully nothing that will keep him from 
being available for game one next week. McMillan gets it deep. Niemi out to set it up for Demers. Don't. Chance at the side for McMillan and Niemi there, and he covers it up. Well, that didn't go where Mark Edward Vlasic wanted that puck to go. Certainly back to your own goaltender is sometimes the play to make, but not in this situation. Puck is going to come around the boards. It doesn't go exactly where Mark wants it. A terrific jump in by Brandon McMillan. He's jumping in and really forced that play back towards the net. You know, Randy, I was just thinking when you were asking, do you know where you were at 2.30 in the morning? We were, Tommy Wingles and you and I were together. I think fans back home thought maybe you were going to be you know, speaking out of school on no, no, no. some nighttime events. Not on the not on game night. <laughs> no. Nope. Yeah, it wasn't interesting to see everybody out in the parking lot. And we all know, Drew, nothing good happens after 2 a.m. That's what I tell my kids. Ribeiro. And a good defensive effort by Pavelski. I think it used to be midnight, but you know, times change. That, that times change. And it's daylight savings, too. <laughs> Pavelski. There you go. Oh. Chance at the side for Havlat. <laughs> Tommy Wingles, to sorry, Tommy Wingles is just all over it right now. Near it, just can't find a way to complete. For Pata, and that's for Erath, but he couldn't get it on target. Kept in, though. Murphy goes across. Yandel looks for Ribeiro down low. He's got it out of the corner, matched up against Boyle. Now Erath, he's pushed to the boards by Irwin. Oh. And Boyle now will just get it out of there. Trying to not ice it, but he did. Dan Boyle gave Mike Ribeiro a pretty good shot in the back there. Ribeiro looked back and didn't like it. Playoff merchandise now available at the Shark Store at SAP Center. It's open Monday through Saturday from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. And also during Sharks home games and also available at locations during the home games during the playoffs. Get your playoff merchandise now at the Shark Store at SAP Center. Just over 13 and a half minutes to go in this one. At least in the third period. Sharks with a one goal lead. Goals by Pavelski, two of them, and Logan Couture. Piemi with a save and the rebound to Boyle. And he'll get it out now, and the Sharks will get at least a partial change here after that icing. And remember, Todd McClellan used up his timeout some time ago. Justin Braun almost lost it. Now he does lose it. Here's trouble, but Stewart with a nice block. Vermette, and that's off Burns' skate, but it's kept in at the point by Ekman Larson. He'll move it. Poke check by Braun. Comes to the net, kicked out by Niemi. Oliver Ekman Larson. And another Ekman Larson shot. Niemi blocks that too. Wow. The Desert Dogs pushing here in the third. We had one last night in game number 81 from Martin Hamlet with the Hattie and the natural hat trick. The heavy Hattie. The breakaway stays with it. Bang puts it in. Patrick Watt pulls his goalie early. Terrific play in the defensive zone by Logan Couture. Marty Hamlet never misses from there. Boom, in the net. It's a three-goal output by Martin Hamlet. The fans love it. Something the Sharks have been hoping for, expecting for a long period of time, and Marty Havlett is getting it right now at the right time of year. That's his sixth career hat trick. His first in nine years, November of the 2005 season, when he was with, an, with the Ottawa Senators. He scored three against Buffalo that year. And he's only the second Shark to have three goals in the third period, as Shepard is denied there. The only other Shark to score three goals in a third period was Joe Thornton. He did it in 2008, and he did it against the Phoenix Coyotes. But the bad news is the Sharks lost the game 5-4. Ouch. Ouch. Well, it's fun when you, you see a guy who's who struggled. I mean, he struggled to get back in the lineup, struggled to stay healthy, and he's been in and out of the lineup. He was sat out the game before in Anaheim. It's not easy for a guy like Marty Havlet to take it. He bounces back. He doesn't sulk. He bounces back. Scores a hat trick. Pass here for Pavelski. Goes all the way to Boyle. Now Pavelski. And he scooped it just wide. Had to make an adjustment on that pass from Boyle. Still got a decent shot away, although it was wide. Miami out to try and settle it, but the bouncing puck went 
either over or under the blade of his stick. Back to the point for Summers. Gormley in for Chipchura, and it deflects away to Boyle. He'll send it in, and Wingles has got the foot speed to get there to avoid the icing. Havlat, a nice breakup, and now Thornton. He's got Marty out front, turns away, takes a hit on the near boards from Chipchura. Joe comes off the boards with it, behind the net, gets it back. And intercepted now by the Coyotes as Shane Doan comes the other way. Doan wanted Korpakoski coming in. Here's Thornton again to Braun. Hurdle on the ice now. Sharks in the middle of a line change, and that's Brent Burns getting a stick to it to help the Sharks regain possession. Thornton. Turns from Korpakoski back over to Stewart. On to Braun. Up for Hurdle. We're seeing a, a little difference in lines right now in this third period. One, because Bracken Kearns is out, so Tom McCall is juggling things. But he's also trying to work in some combos that he may have to go to in a playoff game. And Niemi will cover this with just under 11 minutes to go. And Kirtle back with Burns and Thornton. Joe Pavelski playing a different role, maybe playing in that third line center role. These are all things that Todd McCullen considers. So this uh, coaching staff goes through. They talk about in the morning and in the afternoon. You've noted that the preparation for L.A. has been going on for some time now. What starts happening as soon as this game ends and the Sharks coaching staff gets on the plane tonight back to San Jose? Continuation of what's been happening now for about two and a half, three weeks. They're going to continue to refine things. They're going to come up with a game plan that they want to solidify so it, the clear, concise message gets to the player on this is how L.A. plays and this is how we have to play in order to combat them and defeat them. They're working on the final touches. James Shepard to the late man coming and that was Demers. Shepard on it now to Kennedy. Shepard. Desjardin out front, so is Kennedy. Desjardin looking for the pass, but it didn't get through. Blocked by Stone. Shepard backhands it into traffic. And Byzantine's got it. Every, every time you see James Shepard now on the ice with the puck, you're more and more impressed. He is becoming just solid and trustworthy with the puck. He's more confident. He held on to that puck and let his forwards, the guys, his line mates, work to try to get open. And when you watch James Shepard now, you're seeing a guy whose confidence is growing, but maybe as a San Jose Shark, it's at its zenith. By the way, the Kings are playing Anaheim tonight. They're 1-1 in the first period in that game in Los Angeles. Important game for the Ducks. And you know the Kings would like to spoil their yes, sir. hopes and dreams. It's just, it's just a great three-way rivalry in California. Dan Boyle back defensively, got a stick to that. Now here's Halpern. And he tried to center it for Moss, who was parked in front, couldn't get it there. Here's an example of Dan Boyle's decision making. Much quicker and made the right play on the read. Wingle, the drop pass, and Havlad had half the net. He just missed wide. Here's Dome back the other way. Stewart back. Dome gets through, but Stewart got just enough of him to steer him away. There's a shot saved by Niemi with a great kick save. Braun muscles his way to center. Shepard, he'll break in. Shepard, Marlowe, saved by oh. Byzantine. Almost the rebound put away by Logan Couture, but cleared. Now Chip Chura sends it in. Marlowe back and over to Justin Braun. Business picking up again here in the third. <laughs> Great chances at both ends. Up at center, Doan. He'll wait for help, and a line change, too. Gets it on the wing. The drop pass for Chip Chura. And a shot blocked by Demers. Recovered by the Coyotes, Ekman Larson. The Desert Dogs trying to tie it up here in the third. And the pass from Doan goes all the way to center. 3-2, Sharks, 8.15 to go. Korpakoski, challenging Demers, turns away. Yandel, 
Back to Korpakovsky, and a good poke check at the last minute by Thornton. Tomas Hurdle down the wing to center, across the Phoenix line, and he couldn't get past Michael Stone. Kennedy, and that pass just a little too hot off his stick. Botker whips a shot that deflects up into the screen and out of play. We'll be back in the desert. Back at highlights of this regular season. How about the return of Rafi Torres against Philadelphia? First game after the Olympics, first goal of the game, Rafi Torres, and he would score another that night. He was a force when he came back. And the Sharks hoping that when Rafi Torres comes back for game one, knock on wood, that he is just as forceful, just as powerful, and just as much as an impact player. Ended up playing five games, had three goals and five points in those five games. But he's been out the last 17 now, including this one, as the Sharks just want to rest him and keep everything right heading into the postseason. A scramble in front, Shepard trying to get himself a goal here to give the Sharks some insurance. And now Mike Rivero back the other way for the Coyotes. And they're offside. 7.15 left on the clock here in the third period. Well, if you can get Rafi Torres back in the lineup, and Tomas Hurdle continues to look as good as he has, then you have a lot of options if you're Todd McCollum. That depth where the San Jose Sharks burst out of the gates this year. That depth is back. If you can play Joe Pavelski on your first line or your third line center, you've got some nice options if you're a coaching staff. Pavelski out there now with Pavlat and Wingle. Brandon Formley, and that'll come back on an icing call. Let's talk Phoenix for a moment here. They're not going to the playoffs. Obviously a disappointing year, even though it came down to the final week. They have scored during the six-game losing streak only seven goals. Yeah. So say what you want about goaltending, and I know that's an issue as well with Mike Smith out. It but the offensive be. pop just hasn't been there for the last two weeks. Where do they go from here? Well, there's a lot of good things that they've got. We talked about Brandon Gormley. Oh, we got injury right there. You have Brandon McMillan, Brandon Gormley, you've got some good young players on this team. But they have to find some more, more depth offensively, without a doubt. McMillan, drop pass, and the save by Niemi off a hard shot from Doan. Now the Sharks, possible three on two here. It's Hamlet, but into the zone. And the Sharks are offside as there was a block just at the line. One thing you don't have to worry about if you are the Phoenix Coyotes, number one, your management team is solid. Don Maloney leading that was his general manager. And one of the best coaches in the National Hockey League in Dave Tippett. He's a coach's coach. Yeah, I'm just going to say that. You talk to other yeah. coaches in the league and they talk about Tippett near the top of their list. Without a doubt. And he is. He's a guy that is well respected throughout the National Hockey League. He's a smart coach. He gets the most out of his players. But you can't coach scoring. I don't care who you are. It's just too tough in this league because defense is so hard. Goaltenders are so good. If you don't have those goal scorers, it's pretty tough to win. But I still maintain if Smith would have been in the Nets, they'd be, that tonight would be a different game as far as the importance of it. Fair enough. Hurdle catching. It's an old coach, eh? Old coach, are always hard on goalies. <laughs> <laughs> Hurdle with the big hit on Murphy down low. Botker in there. And Thornton comes out with it. He's got Burns in front. Puck deflected away. Now Blasic, and that's off for Mets sticking out of play. We will step aside, 5.49 left to go. Game summary, Joe Pavelski starts things off. 3.43 in, then he gets a second goal. Then the Phoenix Coyotes get one for Mike Ribeiro, but Logan Couture answers early in this period, only to have Shane Doan get one back. 31 seconds later off a play out of the corner, and that's where we stand, Pavelski Two goals, he's got 41 now as he reaches 40 for the first time in his career. And he's also, looks like, going to end up with the third highest total in a season in Sharks history. Behind only Chichu who had that 56 goal year with Joe Thornton. First year they were together. And then Nolan and Marlowe each with 44 goal campaigns. Great performances all. But Joe Pavelski's year has been 
one for the Sharks record books, but you know, you, you can't say from our point of view that you didn't see this coming with Joe Pavelski. He just continues to get better and better, and his game elevates every single year. It shouldn't come as a surprise to anybody that's followed the Sharks and the Sharks number eight. But if you go back to when he first came to the Sharks, and yeah. when you look at players of his type, and I mean players who are not big, he is not oversized by any stretch, and players that are not elite skaters, and Pavelski's a good skater, but he certainly is an elite. If you're not an elite skater and you're not big, most of the time, you don't make it to the NHL. Sorry, that's the way it works. Not only did he make it, he is a star in this league, and that speaks to his hockey IQ, his skill, his work ethic, and his willingness and desire every year to make himself better. Herbata shot deflects just wide of the net, and now Desjardins. You talk about leadership and a role model you yeah. want around your young guys too, right? You're absolutely right. Stay tuned. Esher and Sharks postgame live coming up next year. Brody Brazil, Curtis Brown back in our studios in San Francisco, and then Jamie Baker live here as well, all chipping in on postgame live. And they'll talk about this, and then they will be able to go, I'm sure, a little bit in depth on what's coming up next week. Game one against LA. We don't know when. We know where at SAP Center, probably either Wednesday or Thursday. Blocked in front by Logan Couture. He'll send it to center. Shepard there against Ekman Larson. He got by him, but a second wave of defense comes in. Now Marlowe back to the point for Irwin. He'll send this all the way to the other side for Shepard. He wanted Couture behind the net, but broken up by Ekman Larson. Coyotes can't get it out. Bodker has it stolen by Couture. Logan right to Irwin in front for Marlowe, and he couldn't catch that hard pass. Well, Matt Irwin had to find a way to get the puck to the net. A block was coming out, so he just took a little bit off it, went for the shot pass, but Patrick Marlowe couldn't find it. How good was Couture's pass oh, out of that traffic back to the point and right on the tape? And before that, the play he made without the puck, because you've already talked about how good he is away from the puck. Chip Chura lost it at the blue line. I think he was claiming a sharp player going off the ice. Yeah. Created a too many men situation, not called. Yandel to the line, not out as Braun keeps him alive. Now a stretch pass, Dylan on a breakaway. And Yemi with the save! And steered out now by Burns. Monty Niemi keeps the Sharks in the lead, stopping the captain, Shane Doan, on a breakaway. Is that an athletic save or what? Wow. Full splits. Wingles. Back to Martin Havlat. Havlat wants Wingles down in the corner, but the Coyotes have it. Ekman Larson moving in on Demers. Kopitoski whips huh. one wide. Now Havlat chips just enough to get it out, but not ice it. And we're down to three minutes. And we've already seen a pretty good push from Phoenix. They're going to come especially hard now these final three minutes to try and get this one tied up. Bodker and Marlowe with it now. He'll stick handle his way into some open ice and chip it out. Boy, he was right on Murphy yep. on that back check, too. Almost got it off him. And Phoenix offside here with 2.36 to go. And now we gave our Bay Alarm saves of the game away in the second period with 16. But here's a breakaway save that we might as well add to the bunch. What a save by Antti Niemi. Talk about an effort. Watch the splits. Whoa, that can't feel good. Well, somebody my age, yeah, it wouldn't feel very good at all. But it's a fantastic save by Antti Niemi. Gets over, slides over, gets that extension, full splits, and robs Shane Doan on the breakaway. I don't think there's a rule against giving a second bail arm save. That's a, right. that's a bonus bail arm save. That is a big time bonus. Burns. Cut, uh, Hurdle, and then uh, Thornton. Yeah, they were passing it all over the place there. It's the problem with these three guys, they all look alike on the ice. <laughs> 48, 19, and 88. All big, all good, all left shots. Yeah. 
Burns off the glass. Erat knocks it down to the net. Saved by Niemi off Rad in Verbata. Just keep adding to it. Anti Niemi. Just go, go back to the save. This is such a good save. Watch the splits. Look at the extension, full extension. Legs akimbo. Making the save, and here's another good save. Turn, adjust, look how square he is. He goes down a little bit early, but then regains his composure, gets square, makes himself big, even though he's down on his knees. And able to make another big stop. That's 31 shots for the Coyotes. They win the face off, Ekman Larson. And his wrists are blocked, but then he gets enough body on Pavelski to prevent a breakaway, but Pavelski has it anyway. His pass hits Ekman Larson, intended for Couture. Now the Desert Dogs come back in Doan. Setting up out of the corner. Tight turn. Gets it back to the point. Ekman Larson to this side for Yandel. And his shot blocked by Couture. A minute and a half to go. And Byzantine still in the Phoenix net. He may come out now on this icing call. As back the other way, Justin Braun. That's so sure. shaken up in the corner in that collision with Doan. He and Shane Doan went into the corner hard, but then they just kind of just sat there. They saw it was going to be a nice thing, so Justin Brown thought, I'm going to conserve as much energy as possible. And you look at Mark Byzantine coming well out of the net. Looks like he's going to come out. Yeah, he is going to the box, and I think Dave Tippett will call his timeout. Maybe not. Maybe he's just going to get the change that he wants. Either way, this gives the... And now he takes yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. So, a minute 25 to go here, and tip into the Coyotes with the faceoff in the shark zone. We'll try and get an equalizing goal here in the third, as they've certainly given the Sharks all they could handle tonight. Well, this is what you expect for the Phoenix Coyotes, and I like the way the Sharks have responded. The Sharks have not come out and just gone through the motions. They have walked the walk, up their talk being, we want to make sure we get our game ready. We want to make sure that we earn the right to feel confident going into game one of the Stanley Cup playoffs. And Dave Tippett's group, as usual, plays as hard as they can. So this has been a very good hockey game. And it's it shows you the professionalism of both teams, but it also shows you that competitiveness of pro athletes. Guys in the NHL, when it comes down to your team's guy are gonna be there, my team's gonna be here, and we're gonna drop the puck, we're gonna go for a win. So here we go. Empty net, final minute and a half of the third. Sharks trying to hold their lead. Couture stands in against one of the best face-off guys in the league, Vermette, and he wins the draw. Ekman Larson to Mike Rivero. Back up top, and Ekman Larson couldn't catch it. And Mike Rivero's got a nice set of hands. He can pass the puck. And he can shimmy shake you a little bit at the blue line, too. Trying to keep it in, and he does on the reverse pass to Doan. Now Pavelski will clear. I thought he did. One minute to go. Still offside, so the Sharks have got a little bit of a freebie. They're going to clear. Finally, the Coyotes tag up, and the Sharks were no, as you noted, no rush to move the puck. Whoops. There's one that goes off the net, but Stewart recovers, gets it to center, off Havlat, and down to Yandel. Plus, well, make it exciting, even though you got all that time. On the entry, E-Rat. Stone goes to the net, it comes back high. Now to Ekman Larson. He boots it to Ribeiro. That's blocked, but kept in at the line. Ribeiro. Down low. Now don't say by the Emmy. A scramble in front. Have lad to Marlowe. He'll play it off the boards. He'll get to it himself unless he's hooked, and he yes. was. And there'll be a penalty. Be a penalty shot. Right, an open. Was it a breakaway? It was a goal. Uh, not a, yeah, no goal. I thought it might be a, a goal, I should say, not a penalty shot but it looked like Patrick Marlowe would be in the breakaway, so. Had that happened on yeah. a breakaway, it would have been an automatic goal. Dave Tippett is just furious right here. Off the boards to himself. Patrick Marlowe, nice little self-chip. Just a hooking penalty. Dave Tippett is absolutely furious. Can't be about the hook, it must have been about something else. I think it's about the offside. That's what he's mad at, because he's yelling at the linesman. And that's Dave. Dave is gonna compete hard and coach as well as he can. He's not gonna mail it aim even though his team is not going to the postseason. So that forces Byzantine back into the net with the face off in the Phoenix zone. 14.4 to go here. Sharks will have a power play here. 
And if you can win the draw, you can probably take care of the rest of this hockey game. Pavelski does that. Boyle forcing it to the net. Thornton back toward Pavelski. One last chance for Phoenix here, but Boyle blocks it. Here's Burns. Pavelski saved by Byzantine. And the regular season is over. The San Jose Sharks finish it with a 3-2 win on the road here. A great bounce back game for Antti Niemi as he comes up with a 32 save performance. Pavelski with two goals, Couture with the game winner as the Sharks finish strong, winning their final two games and win this one here in Phoenix. The final score, the Sharks three, the Desert Dogs two, and Sharks post game loss.